AI and machine learning is promising a hostile takeover of everything from manufacturing plants to hamburger joints to scorekeepers like me. Chat GPT is coming for me. But is it an investment-worthy opportunity? And just how big will it be? According to PwC, AI could contribute up to $16 trillion to the global economy by 2030. That's more than the current output of China and India combined. Today's audience requested ETF battle is a quadruple header between four AI-focused robotics ETFs. R2-D2 and RoboCop are going to love today's show, so stick around. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Welcome to another brand new season. We're glad to have you with us. Keep your excellent ETF battle requests coming. Send us your ticker symbols in the comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. If we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a shirt. Now, just a quick reminder, be first in line for our margin of safety tool. It's our margin of safety tool. That's our Benjamin Graham special. It's now available. Just hit the description section below to register. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments, along with our program judges. Well, it's robot mania time, and today's ETF battle was requested by a longtime viewer named Sonny Raj, who requested today's quadruple header between four ETFs focused on AI, machine learning, and robotics. It's bots versus iRobo versus Robo versus robot. Lots of choices here in ETF land, but which fund is the optimal choice for this thematic exposure? Helping us to sort through it is a highly esteemed judging panel. We've got Mike Akins at ETF Action and Shana Sissel with Banrion Capital. Mike and Shana, welcome to the show. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me. Great to be here, Ron. Good to see you, Shana. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. For the mystery category, that's where our judges can choose any factor or thing that they think is crucial to today's contest. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. They can opt for split decisions. They can pretty much do whatever they want. It's completely up to them. But I'm going to keep track of today's program in terms of the score, and then we'll announce at the end of the program an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes on this program are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So it's sisters before misters. Let's start with Shana. Our first category is cost. Please kick things off, Shana. So this was really interesting because uh, obviously there's four funds in this battle. Uh, so lots to consider. And all of these funds are relatively expensive uh, and smaller in assets, even though their uh, issuers may be well known. You know, overall, um, IRBO, the iShares Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF, has the lowest expense ratio at 0.47%, which is actually still quite high for an iShare. Uh, but it has a very small asset base at just under 283 million. Uh, and the spread to trade it is about five cents. So while it has a very low uh, expense ratio, it has a little bit of difficulty in terms of how you can trade it. You know, on the flip side, BOTZ is actually um, a little bit more expensive at 68 uh, basis points, but it has about 1.5 uh, billion in AUM, and the spread to trade it is quite small at one cent. So between the two of them, there's pros and cons. If you're going strictly on expense and also taking into consideration who the issuer is, I lean towards uh, IRBO. Just to go over the other two, Robo has the most expensive fund at 95 basis points, though it is one of the larger ones. It's also the hardest to trade with a 10 basis point spread or a 10 cent spread. And ROBT at 65 basis points for an expense ratio, very very small, again, well-known issuer with First Trust, but uh, spread is about four cents. So with a um, five cent spread and a expense ratio of 47 basis points, my winner is IRBO. That's a strong start. Thank you, Shana. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of cost? Yeah, I don't think there's much to add to Shana's analysis there. She kind of hit all the 
right topics in absolute expense ratio, uh, liquidity, um, your total cost of ownership from trading perspective. Um, I would just add that they are very unique. So they all have robotics in the name, but when you get under the hood, they're very unique strategies. So um, in a space like this, where the volatility and the divergence of returns are so large, um, cost and expense is going to be a secondary factor to what you actually own. Um, so I agree, IRBO is my winner, um, though it's not a high factor for me in a thematic, highly concentrated category as such as today's battle. That takes us next to exposure strategy. This is where we do get under the hood and take a look at the holdings as well as the strategy of each of these ETFs. So Mike, you're still up. Give us your analysis, please. Yeah, so I mean, if you think about this category in general, there's actually eight funds that we classify as robotics. There's about three and a half billion dollars across those eight funds. And there's some actual history across these. I think uh, BOTS has got a, um, is approaching a 10 year um, history that I, that'll get later this year. So there's a track record within this category. But like you find oftentimes in the thematic space, unlike the broad sector space or size and style space, even though they have the same names and a similar objective of what they're trying to achieve, looking under the hood, they're very different. So with the four names, as an example, the four funds we're looking at today, there's 247 companies held across these four ETFs. 168 of them are only held in one out of the four. So very different take, right? Robotics apparently is in the eye of the beholder or the eye of the issuer in this case. So um, making that decision really you really need to look under the hood. To that extent, they're all gonna have a high allocation, first to technology, second to industrials. They're all very global in nature, so they have a, a good breakdown from that perspective. So from my perspective, it comes down to, do I like this space from a macro perspective? Does the story make sense to me? Why the macro backdrop for this theme to perform well? Um, should I allocate to it? Yes, I believe that. There's a lot of good rationale behind that. And then second, Am I owning companies that are beyond my broad-based strategies when I'm thinking about exposure? Am I getting outside of what I'd own in triple Qs or what outside of what I'd own in Acqui? And I think all of the all four of these ETFs do that. But in my opinion, Robo with a higher exposure to small caps and less overlap with the triple Qs um, probably is the one that jumps out at me as the winner in exposure, though they're all very unique in nature and they're all going to get you that exposure. But if I had to pick one based on that exposure strategy breakdown, I would go with ROBO um, purely on the breakdown of that higher exposure to small caps and less overlap with your major composites. Shana, you're up next for exposure strategy. How do you see it? Yeah. So again, as Mike pointed out, um, you know, how you define AI and robotics is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and all of them kind of have a little flavor. Um, I would say bots is probably the most vague in its description of what it invests in. It just says it wants to work with companies and invest in companies that are in the production of artificial intelligence and robotics. Uh, so it's very specific there, uh, but it doesn't give much else in terms of clarity, in terms of weightings or how they select or anything. Um, and it has the most concentration at 44 holdings. Uh, and then you look at the iShares IRBO. Uh, that one's a bit broader. It's very passive. There's not a lot of inputs. It's 50% of revenue must be derived from the key theme. Uh, and it is uh, equally weighted. So um, everything's equal. Uh, all of these funds have a major global uh, footprint. Uh, I don't think any of them has more than 60% in the US. Uh, so something worth considering. Um, while I agree that Robo is interesting, I like that it has both quantitative and qualitative approaches. Uh, I like that it is a little bit different and has a, a pretty diverse uh, portfolio at 82 holdings while still remaining somewhat concentrated and even has an ESG criteria for consideration. I actually prefer uh, ROBT, the first trust uh, product. I think it's much clearer in its language and in the portfolio as to the fact that it's looking for enablers, uh, they call them enablers, engagers, and uh, enhancers. Uh, so enablers, people who provide the inputs to 
do robotics or artificial intelligence, the uh, engagers who are the people who are actually producing products that go to market to solve problems uh, using robotics or AI, and then the uh, enhancers, which are people kind of in the outside where it's not necessarily the core of their business, but they are um, highly influencing the space. And I kind of like that approach. I like the, the clarity that's there. It's a somewhat diversified fund with 112 holdings. I also like that it's quarterly rebalanced. Uh, it This and Robo are the only two that rebalance quarterly. Uh, the ROBT also reconstitutes semi-annually. And why I think that's important, and this is a, an evolving space. There's more players coming into the market. So there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, you know, invest in newer players in the space when you're re uh, reconstituting semi-annually and rebalancing quarterly, whereas uh, bots and the uh, iShares IRBO uh, are semi-annually for iShares and annually for bots. So I think in a space that's so dynamic, that is, you know, on the front of, um, you know, this technology that's coming out where there's more and more players coming into the space and more and more things developing, I actually like the uh, approach that um, the first trust product has and the fact that it does rebalance more frequently and re, uh, constitutes its index more frequently because I think it can take advantage of what I think is a fast moving uh, in industry. That takes us next to performance. And Shana, you're still up. So give us your analysis. Which of these four ETFs stands out when it comes to performance? So there was no clear winner across all the time periods I looked at, but the one who had the greatest persistence of return and over the longer term had the strongest performance was ROBT uh, with a five-year number of just under 40% up. It's clearly the winner in the longer term. Bots, uh, which is the largest of the funds, uh, actually had the worst performance of all of them and by a lot. Um, as Mike pointed out, there's uh, because they're kind of approaching things differently, there's a lot of dispersion of returns between the four of them. Uh, and bots had by far the worst performance uh, in the five year down 2.62%. Uh, um, IRBO also had some strong performance. So it just feel like it's necessary to point that out because it is a low cost. But to me, the winner is ROBT. Thank you, Shana. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to performance? The divergence of return on a year-over-year -year basis is pretty high, and there's no one clear winner each time period. So it's tough to say, hey, this is my winner. Though if you just look at a sense common inception, um, ROBT has a pretty good um, lead over the other three. So I think just hands down, you have to say it since common inception, it is the winner um, for that full time period. On a look forward basis, it really comes down to your your view on what are you trying to achieve here, right? And I think when I look at um, thematics, if I believe in the theme, I'm looking for beta and I'm looking for a higher beta than the broad based market. Um, so when I kind of look at it from that perspective, um, you know, the ones that jump out at me are bots, um, the first trust product, ROBT um, and Robo. Um, they all have a pretty high beta relative to Acqui or beta relative to SPY or QQQs. Um, whereas the iShares IROBO actually has a pretty pretty bland beta. Um, so it would lead me to believe there's more large caps in there, more kind of me too products. So I'm got getting that, that differentiation of actually putting this in my portfolio. Um, but to pick a clear winner on performance, I think you have to just um, keep it fair and give it to ROBT because over the almost four years since common inception, it has the best performance. Though on a look forward basis, I would personally be looking for those portfolios, a little more kick in it, a little more beta because I'm allocating this space because I believe in it. And I'm willing to deal with those ups and downs because over the long term, I think it's going to generate alpha. Otherwise, what am I doing? Um, so that perspective, my winners um, ROBT, but in this space, uh, look for that sizzle. Um, or Sissel, Shana, and we'll, uh, we'll roll with that. that that's a, almost a homonym, if I'm not mistaken, English teachers, Sissel and Sizzle. And that's certainly what you want if you're investing in this thematic space, as both of our judges have highlighted up until this point. That takes us next to the mystery category. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. And Mike, you're up. So what is your mystery battle category and which of these four ETFs stands out? 
Yeah, so my mystery ultimately comes down to what do you own, um, like it often does in these thematic categories, meaning am I getting, am I expanding my ownership? Am I getting into an allocation that I didn't have before I allocated this portfolio? I think all four of these products um, check that box. So all four of them are giving you exposure that you do not get in the core, at least not meaningfully in the core. So they're going to get you that allocation. Um, to me, I'm looking to, from that perspective, then how am I going to differentiate more? What's going to get me more downstream? I'm kind of going back to that robo to that bots, higher small cap allocation, higher beta portfolios. Um, if you look at the growth numbers, forward looking growth numbers, they both screen best um, on next 12 month earnings, next 12 month sales. Um, so that would be where I'm looking on this category is I'm clearly buying this for growth. Um, am I getting differentiation in my portfolio? Am I truly getting those growth characteristics I'm looking for over the long haul? I think the, the boxes are checked here. So my winner um, in the mystery category, I'd call a toss up between robo and bots. Thank you, Mike. Shana, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I take a different approach than Mike does in the space. Um, I look at any sort of emerging category that I'm going to have exposure to the same way I would invest in venture capital. So the one thing I don't want is concentration because there will be a lot of winners and losers and it's far too early to sort of decide who those will be and there will be new players coming into the space. So for me, I prefer ROBT having that broader uh broader holdings at 112, having broader exposure both globally and across market cap, and then having those clear uh, focused uh, tiers, those three tiers, that engagers, the enablers, and the enhancers. I like that approach because we are still so early into this emerging area of technology that there are going to be a lot of players that come into the space. There are going to be existing companies that maybe are not involved in this space now, but will be in the future. And I like to cover all my bases from that respect. No matter which one of these funds I choose, it's going to be high beta. It's going to be growth. I actually am looking to minimize some of that and to have the better chance of picking winners. And I just think ROBT does that and has proven that. You know, for example, bots has the worst performance over every single time period, uh, even though it's, it's been around. Uh, so I don't have confidence that even though it's higher beta and has some of those better growth uh, characteristics, that it is actually providing me not only the exposure I want, but the potential for outperformance. So taking that venture capital approach, considering the fact that this is an emerging uh, industry, emerging technology, I want to have a little more diversification and I want to invest with somebody that has shown me that in the earliest stages of this technology that they were able to outperform. And so for me, that's ROBT, which has been around since 2018 and has the strongest performance, the most diversification, and the clearest investment approach and philosophy of the four. Well, our judges are bringing it. Let's give them one final opportunity to give us their overall battle winner. Shana, you're up. Well, I think it's pretty clear here. My overall battle winner is the first trust product. Interestingly enough, it's the smallest product by assets. And it's not like the youngest either. So um, I find it curious that it hasn't encouraged more assets given its strong performance, its strong holdings, uh, management team, it's done in, conjun in conjunction with NASDAQ. Um, but to me, it's the clear winner. It's the one that I would use if I were going to get, uh, put on exposure to the space. Well, maybe after today's show, that will change. Thank you, Shana. Mike, your chance to give us your overall battle winner? Yeah, I, I don't have a clear winner today. I, I think all four of these strategies um, do a pretty good job of allocating to the space. So I think if you like um, the broad theme of robotics and AI, which it's hard not to, um, when you think longer term allocations in a growth portfolio, they will all get you a good directional allocation to that. Um, from my perspective, when I start mixing and matching themes, I go beyond just owning a large growth or a total market growth portfolio, and I, I specifically look into a theme, I do want to be a little more concentrated. I do want a little bit more sizzle um, because there's a reason I'm going into that. These are public listed companies. 
I mean, out of these four ETFs, the smallest one on a weighted average market cap is 25 billion. So I think to call it venture capital is a little bit of a stretch. These are public listed companies with very large market capitalizations. So therefore, I, I feel like a portfolio of 30 to 50 stocks is pretty well diversified. All that being said, um, it's a toss up to me between bots and robo on a forward looking kind of long term allocation perspective. But don't think you can go wrong with any four if you really like the space. OK, so it's a split decision for you between bots and robo. Is that that's your final call? Correct. That is final, final. <laughs> All right. I got you down. <laughs> and according to my battle scorecard, uh, this is going to be a triple split decision. That's a first. We got bots, robo, and robot, R-O-B-T. Now, the latter, R-O-B-T, was Shana's favorite. That's from First Trust. And as she pointed out, she likes the diversification of that fund. She also likes the quarter rebalancing schedule. Of course, this is a fast-moving theme, so it's uh, being updated every quarter with changes to the portfolio. She likes that. And she also liked the broader global approach. And Mike making his arguments in favor of bots and robo. I got to say, bots was a little bit of a surprise for me because it didn't garner any of Mike's votes in any of the categories with the exception of his final overall battle winner, which was really a split between bots and robo. So there you have it, uh, audience. What do you think about today's robot mania? Do you agree with what our judges came up with? I thought they raised some real, real good points and uh, a couple of key takeaways. This is a, this is a mega investment theme that uh, is going to impact all industry sectors. AI, machine learning. Uh, we're hearing it with Chat GPT. So keep this, ET, keep these ETFs on your radar. And certainly, it's. I think it's a theme that has a long runway. And I think what we've given you here, at least at the very least, is a good start for beginning your investment journey. And some of these ETFs that we've highlighted on today's show will hopefully help you do that. Thanks again to Shana and Mike for an excellent job. Timely analysis and really good job. It wasn't an easy uh, ETF battle whenever we have four funds that we're analyzing all at the same time. It's, it's a lot of work. So well done. And thank you very much for your solid work. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. It was great being here. Visit the description section below for research links to our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.